Hi Nathaniel, with the experience of 12 years you have, can you give me an idea about the global air freight industry? From your perspective, you might have seen things evolving in air cargo, right? And you might have seen things happening, that's why you started your company. Hi Libin, uh, think indeed of my early days in air cargo and I compare it to now. The, the first thing that comes to mind, and of course, uh, you know, as you already know, COVID has played a, a big role in that, is air cargo is not seen the same way as it was, you know, both from the general public, but also inside the airlines, especially for passenger airlines. You know, air cargo is no longer a byproduct. It's really something that can bring value, that can bring revenues. And in some cases, even, uh, you know, it was a, not more than a, just a, s a small help. It was really the only revenue stream that some airlines had uh, during the COVID pandemic. So the image of air cargo, I think, has changed a lot. And in terms of market, if you look at the, how it is now, clearly also that has evolved a lot. But we are in a very, you know, an industry that has cycled, so that's also something that's here to stay, I think. It will go down, it will go up, so that's uh, that's uh, maybe it's stable in the, in the fact that there are cycles. Can you give me an idea about the point of time in which you decide to start the company Wireman? Wireman, we started in 2014. We have uh, my two associate partners and uh, managing directors of the company. They come also from the transport industry. Uh, in, in their case, they come from railway industry. So we started with a rail focus and I was more the air cargo guy. So we started in the, with, with, with revenue management products. We are quite successful and we grew the group now to uh, 70 people. And now when we launched Wiremind Cargo, it was really because we, you know, a need for a dedicated entity for air cargo. Given the, the momentum there is in air cargo and given our experience, we think we can bring really some added value to the table in the air cargo industry. So that's why we have now this dedicated entity, uh, Wiremind Cargo. What was the kind of demand that you saw when you started Wiremind Cargo specifically? from the air cargo industry? First of all, we started from a position where we had our SkyPallet solution, which is a capacity a 3D capacity optimization solution. So we already had quite a lot of clients with this and we were speaking to these clients about, you know, what do they need? What do they feel they're lacking? And, and we felt, okay, we can bring more to the table than just one solution. So we decided, okay, where are the areas where we can bring added value? And, and there are many. And the demand that the, we were hearing from, from our customers was about data science, you know, how to use the data that they have. They, they knew that they were sitting on data that had value, but not necessarily how to, you know, exploit it to say, how can we bring revenues thanks to the data, the data we have? Um, also, there is a, a need for connectivity. I think that, you know, when you rely too much on legacy systems, you stay with these systems for a long time, and then at some point you get stuck. You cannot connect these systems, you cannot make them evolve. Uh, the maintenance and support becomes very heavy, almost like a burden, and it, it becomes a hindrance to uh, your staff. They don't. They cannot do what they would like to do because of the system. So our philosophy is we can make systems that are not a hindrance. On the contrary, they support your processes and they they allow you to go further. They they allow you to to you know to to, to add value where you need to be and uh, where, where you need to add value. And you know your people need to be focusing on the strategic decisions and not to focus on you know spending half a day on their systems because you know the system is not working well and. and you know, you need a lot of training to get on board. So we can build modern systems that are easy to understand, that bring, you know, data science uh, to the table. And these are parts of the, the reasons why we launched uh, our products. Uh, very recently, you launched uh, Cargo Stack, the cargo management suite. Okay, give me an idea about what is that product really about. I could see many other platforms and doing the same thing. Okay, how it is different, how your product is different from other platforms or other companies that providing these kind of reservations, for example. Give an idea about it and, and, and what is the need for that? We want to bring to the table is not the exact same thing as the other companies are already doing, right? So if we look and you said it rightly, it's, it's, it's a suite. So that means there's not just one system, but it's a portfolio of different systems. Everything we organized around one core system, which is our CMS. So that's a platform to manage all your cargo activity from schedules to reservations, bookings, to your products, you know, your customers, your aircraft, your stations, everything in one, in one uh, system. And then you have next to that some modules that include, you know, data science like overbooking forecast, revenue optimization, SkyPallet, which is still one of our products and will be part of that ecosystem. So now in terms of how we are different from other, other platforms, well, the first thing is that we started recently the platform and that is not a drawback. I think it's an advantage because we have modern technology available for us. We can develop very fast because the technology, the, even the, the programming languages we use is something that was not necessarily existing 10 years ago. 
Um, we bring UI and UX, you know, the user experience in the system is modern. If you look at, uh, you know, your iPhone and you, you download, uh, you know, an, uh, an app, you, read, you will not read a user manual of the app, right? You will directly know the, how, how to use it. The, the, the user experience is very smooth. So we want to bring that to, to cargo management systems. We believe it's possible. The other selling points we have is the data science part. So we bring to the table years of experience of data science. We are French National Railways is trusting us with uh, their revenue management system, and that's 150 million passengers per year. That's more than, you know, Lufthansa or France KLM, for example. So we know how to handle huge sets of data to apply machine learning algorithms to those. And that's really a unique selling point to have your core system, but also, you know, modules that include data science to support your decisions that are made in that core system. And the other thing we have is actually our SkyPilot module, which is a unique uh, way to manage your capacity. In traditional platforms, when you have a, to work on a flight, you work on numbers on a table and you, you say you have your capacity, which is a you know, tonnage, you have your volume, and you have to accept or refuse bookings. But you don't visualize how really the, the bookings look like. So with SkyPilot, when you look on a flight, you don't look at the table, you look at 3D flights. You want to know, you know, it's three days before departure, you want to know how full are we how full is my main deck situation? How full I am on the lower deck side? How can you know the bookings go together? And then you visualize that in 3D with an optimized view. And that really allows you to take the right decisions all the way to departure. And when you release your flights, you bridge the gap with operations, right? You don't just send them a table saying, okay, just these are the bookings that you should put on, on the flight. But you gave them a really a full flight plan in 3D with instructions. And then you have you foster a really great communication with the GHA. And that's really a different way to work and different way to manage your capacity uh, as an end-to-end -end solution. So those are the things that we bring uh, to the table and that other systems uh, do not. Okay, uh, you mentioned uh, two important things. One is the data to do the analytics and then you mentioned connectivity as the challenges with the airlines or the air cargo community around. And you are trying to solve that. How successful you were with all the solutions you have, for example, the SkyPallet, uh, you have revenue optimization. How successful you are catering to that demand? Implementing connectivity in general depends on two things. I would say one is the uh, the will of the airline partner or the forwarder to say, we know what we want to connect with what. So they have, you know, the intention to connect two systems that create value because you don't want to connect systems, you know, just for the sake of connecting. You need to, that needs to support the process, right? So once you have identified these, uh, these uh, use cases, then there is a technical part. And the, the technical part, when an integration is difficult, it's often because of the legacy architecture you have. So if you have a system, I used to work at an airline before and we had some, some systems that were old and when we needed to connect, well, it's like we had, you know, the, the pipe was ready, but there was nowhere to plug it on, right? So with CargoStack, we build a system which is API centric. That means any single data point in the system belongs to a dedicated API. And if you want to connect the API, it's as simple as we give you the key, you open the door and you can go in and you get and you fetch the data. So for SkyPallet, for example, we have several of our partners and clients who we have successfully connected SkyPallet with, and it's quite easy. The projects are usually just a few weeks because it's, it's that simple when the architecture allows it, in fact. So that's that's the key to have your data architecture and, and API-centric system then makes things really much easier than, than with legacy systems. Okay, when talking about your newly launched uh, the cargo management suite, you are still looking for your clients to come in. Uh, many airlines will be using different kind of reservation systems. How smooth would be if some airline wants to switch to a Wiremind cargo management suite? How smooth it would be? First of all, we, we know, of course, that some airlines uh, don't have any system yet. And those are, of course, perfect uh, examples of, uh, of who we want to target because they are using, you know, either Excel or, or no system to manage their booking activity. And those would be perfect uh, clients for cargo stack. But obviously, most airlines, they already have a system, as you said. So the question is, what do we want to tell these airlines? So either they are, have an intention to switch to a more modern system and then we can you know, accompany them and indeed try to have a smooth transition. All our data structure, and as I was saying before, the API centricity architecture makes it three times easier than implementing a legacy system. So that's one, one big, big aspect. And the other aspect would be that we don't offer just the, the core CMS. We have the other strategic modules. And if you want to use one of these modules, we know also how to plug one of these modules to your CMS. So you don't have to buy cargo stack CMS to use the cargo stack modules. So that's a big, uh, big part uh, as well of our uh, business model. You also have a solution for the revenue optimization. How you do that? How successful you are with that product and how successfully you optimize the revenue for some of your clients? You know, revenue management and revenue optimization. And I think that uh, people don't always mean the same thing when they say that. It's, it's, a, it's a broad concept. Everybody wants to optimize their revenues, right? But what exactly does it mean concretely? And I think for me, it means at least four things. So one is your pricing, right? If you want to optimize your revenue, you should sell at the right price. So we have already our dynamic pricing engine, which is already ready. 
which is ready. And that's one aspect of revenue optimization. So it's a, it's a pricing engine. We call it pricing as a service because you can interrogate that algorithm with a request and the, the algorithm will recommend you and, and help you in, in, in setting up the right price, right? So that's one aspect. Then you have other aspects. For me, one is the right overbooking policy. If you want to optimize your revenue, that's also through load factor that you do that. And if you want your flight to be full, you need to anticipate the no-shows on the flights. If you anticipate the no-shows properly, of course, you still have to manage your quality because you don't want to do, you know, very heavy overbooking, otherwise you lead to offloads. But if you don't do any overbooking, you also lead to empty flights. So you have to find the right trade-off and our, and our um, and data science uh, team have come up with an algorithm that forecasts this show-up of the error builds and helps you optimize the revenue of your flights by pushing the load factor up thanks to this overbooking model. So that's number two. Then number three, you have capacity forecasts. You cannot work, it's, I should have said in the beginning because it's really what you need to start with is right capacity forecast, right? This applies to passenger airlines rather than freighters. But if you have a passenger airline, the capacity is fluctuating. You need to be able to anticipate how much space and kilos are you going to be able to load on your belly flights, on your, on your, on your belly space. So capacity forecast for me is, is fully part of revenue optimization. And lastly, you have what we would call traditionally revenue management. And for me, that is setting up, you know, uh, margin targets on your flights. And that is based on demand forecast and on capacity constraint. If you're very full, you need to accept bookings with a higher yield. And if you're, you know, less full, you need to be more, uh, you know, to go down on your rates. So these four pillars, I would say, is revenue optimization. And that's really uh, our, our approach uh, so far. Can you give me an idea about your company in terms of, you know, which product brings you the money, for example? How profitable is your company? What is the kind of revenue or cash burn that you have, for example? So far, with the with the with the SkyPallet product of Wiremine, and until we launched the Wiremine Cargo, we, we had a profitable activity uh, overall. SkyPallet, in particular, was also a profitable activity thanks to uh, all our partners that you can see here. Uh, now, of course, we switched to a model where now launching Wiremine Cargo is something we did to invest. We want to invest, so we are now not focusing on profitability for the coming uh, couple of years because we want really to say, okay. We put the money where we need to put it, and this is cargo stack. So our CMS, our strategic modules, all these, we have now hired a team. There are 15 people working full-time on this product. And right now, we don't focus on, on, on profitability because we have this model of investing for the future, basically. So now, of course, the goal is to have profitability in the short term, but uh, not in 10 years, but also not in uh, six months. You recently collaborated with ECS to create a company called Cargo Tech. So what was the company, what was the real need for that company in this market, rather than going with Wireman Cargo? You have another company called Cargo Tech now. So how that will operate along with Wiremind? And you also want other tech companies to come in and collaborate with the company uh, Cargo Tech, for example. So to be very clear, Cargo Tech is a company that is recently launched and that we, we are partnering with ECS to do so. More companies will follow. And the idea of Cargo Tech, really the founding idea, the concept behind Cargo Tech is we want a company that is able to give an answer to every digital need in the industry. You are an airline, you are a freight forwarder, you have obviously needs in the digital area, Cargotel will be able to provide a solution. That, that isn't to say that Wiremind Cargo will be the provider of all of the solutions, only part of them, and you have, we've, we've spoken about the, those solutions just earlier, but you will have other companies that will also provide other solutions. And in the end, the idea is to create a global tech leader for our cargo that says, I don't do everything you know, with one company, but I'm able to offer you a solution for everything. And there's also an aspect of we accompany you, we, we help you in the strategy, we have a consulting aspect to Cargotech as well, you know? So what we want to do with Cargotech is really offer a digital solution for every single process in the air cargo industry. So that was the reason. And why did we partner with DCS? Well, obviously when you want to do consulting, when you want to offer a solution for all of these processes, you need the tech aspects and you need the business aspects. If you only go to a tech company that is fully focused on tech alone, you have, of course, good quality of tech products, but the business uh, part is often brought by the client himself. If you go to a business expert, they don't have the resources or the software engineers to do the tech. If you bring together companies that associate the business expertise and the tech expertise, for us, it's really the, the, the best of both worlds, and that's the reason why uh, Cargo Tech uh, exists. What is the future of Air Cargo that you foresee in the next five years, for example, from Wiremind's perspective, as well as what, what is the future of Wiremind? Where do you see Wiremind... Uh, in next five years or maybe ten years. I think it's a good transition from my previous uh, the previous question because if you look at why we launched Cargo Tech, it's, it's, it's not just for this year, right? We are looking at the future. We're saying, okay, where do we think Air Cargo will be in five years or ten years, and where do we want Cargo to be? And we are not the only ones, of course, in, in the industry, obviously, but we believe we can play a big role in transforming the industry. So if you want to reach uh, you know an objective in five years, you need to put in place you know 
what uh, you believe is needed to reach that objective. And for us, Cargo Tech is really the cornerstone of what will allow us to uh, help the industry achieve these objectives. For me, the objective is digital transformation. It's something that you hear every year now for a few years, but it's because it doesn't last you know, just one year. It's, it's a journey. It will keep happening in the next years, five years, ten years. I know that in five years we'll, we'll still be speaking about digital transformation. There will be new innovations, new technologies coming to the table. Having said that, what I think is also important is to say that not everything is technology. We don't want to disrupt by, with one platform that becomes the tech for air cargo. You know? we, we want to bring solutions with digital um, assistance, but we don't want to, to digitalize everything. We believe we have this motto that says you know, we, we want to digitalize everything that can be, but not everything should be digitalized. You know, air cargo is an industry uh, where, you know, the people connection is very important. I mean, look at Air Cargo India here. You know, people are not on their laptops. You know, they are talking to each other. So that's, I think, what makes the beauty of this industry. There's so much to do in the digital world, but yet, you know, the people connection is, is, is extremely important. I've met uh, one of my, you know, the most important people I met in my, in my, uh, in my life uh, were uh, in the air cargo industry. I have friends in the industry. I, I love attending these events, and I think that's what makes it really exciting. So bringing that together with, you know, digital transformation, for me, those are the two ingredients that make, you know, air cargo uh, an extremely exciting, you know, domain for now and for the next uh, few years. Thank you so much, Nathaniel, for joining us. Thank you very us. much, Libin.